My name is Gaurav Singhal, and this is the pre-lab video for 510, the atomic mission of gases. In this lab, we will be determining the atomic emissions for five different gases, hydrogen, helium, neon, argon, and krypton. First of all, I would like to thank you for staying in this class, because by now, the drop date has passed, and so now you're kind of stuck with it. Don't worry, it's only a couple of weeks left. Now, to start, we have to deal with uh, basic safety. So, make sure you get on some goggles. The goggles are necessary to pr protect your eyes from the ultraviolet radiations which are emitted through the, um, the gas tubes. You don't really need aprons or gloves for this one since you're not really dealing with harsh chemicals, but if your TA tells you to wear them, just go ahead and comply. Now, in this lab, we're going to be using a tool called the spectroscope. Most of you guys have probably never used it before, but don't worry. It's a very simple tool. Now, there's three regions on here which you're going to really pay attention to. One, there's this part. What you're going to do is this. You want to make sure it's focused towards the light source. The second place is the eyepiece. You're going to look through it in order to see the spectrum. Now, it's very important to note that you're not going to be looking at the light source for the, um, for the spectrum. You're going to have to see it at a little bent angle. So you may want to just try to move a little bit to the side. And so, again, your ideal thing to look at is this region. So you may have to adjust this slightly in order to get it. And you may have to change the slit size by turning this small knob right over here slightly. What this does, it'll sometimes make lines appear more distinct. Now, this is the white light from the tungsten spectrum. We should see a continuous spectrum. So when you look through, you should see something like this, continuous okay. spectrum. Now, the continuous spectrum occurs because white light contains all the frequencies of visible light. Therefore, you'll see a continuous spectrum. Another area we see this is whenever gases are placed under really high pressure. What happens is, the electrons will not have enough time to drop down to the ground state before it jumps back to a different orbital. So it would cause um, a blurring effect. In this lab, you won't really have to worry about this because all these gases will be in low pressure situations. So you should see distinct bands. Now, what I would suggest is in your lab manual, you have a list of all five gases and then you draw the spectrum out from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. Therefore, while you're in the lab, all you have to do is just mark the visible lines. It'll be quicker and it'll, become, it'll save you a lot of time during the lab. Now, now, this is our first station, the hydrogen station. Now, again, remember when you're using the spectroscope, you're going to want to focus on this region. Therefore, you can see the wavelength. When you look through, you should see distinct lines and you can compare it to the values you should see on this chart. These charts include some, not all, but some of the most, most prominent photons of light. Another thing to note is make sure you note the three strongest, most intense light bands. Those will be helpful for your lab report. There's a question on there, number seven, which asks that. If you do not do that during the lab, it will be very difficult to get that information later on. Now we're at the second station, the helium station. Now, again, you'll use the same techniques as you did on the incandescent light bulb and the hydrogen station. You'll point this part towards the light source. You will look through this region and try to observe the visible spectrum through here. You may have to adjust the slit a certain size to make the lines a little bit more distinct, but by now you should have gotten that. So when you look through it, you'll get the emission spectrum something like this. And as you see, it's distinct from hydrogen. When you're doing this one, you'll observe some lines being more intense than others. Make sure you note down the four most important ones. Just like there was a question on hydrogen for the three most intense lines. There's a similar question for helium, which are the four most intense lines. You'll need that information for your post-lab report. Each element has their own emission spectrum. This occurs due to the different numbers of proton. Therefore, the, there will be differences in the wavelengths of light that excites this particular electron.
that corresponds to the different bands on the emission spectrum. That's a way that you can distinguish between one element and another. It's kind of like each element has their own unique fingerprint, which is only applicable to them. The final part of this lab is distinguishing between three unknown noble gases. What you do have is a list of some of the most intense wavelengths of light, which you should see. Now, what you're going to want to do is, in your lab notebook, mark down the lines that you see while you're looking at the emission spectrum. Afterwards, when you've done all three of them, I would suggest then you go to one of these charts and compare your values. This way, you're not really influenced by the numbers that are on the chart and you can get better results. Typically, if you try to look through these lines and then look at your, and then try to find the spectrum, of this, um, wavelength on the spectrum, it will take a lot more time and you'll be holding up other people and you'll be doing stuff needlessly. In conclusion, you're lucky because this lab is one of the shortest labs you're going to have to do in chemistry. So you'll be out in here probably under 30-40 minutes. So you don't have much time to spend, but it doesn't mean this lab is not important. It deals with very important concepts like energy is quantized. And in order to summarize everything and say why this lab is so important, I will do a short wrap. It's going to be kind of a parody of the freshman of the Bel Air, so. Now this is a story all about how quantum theory puts science upside down. I'd like to take a minute just to right there and tell you why it is and why you care. He black chunk with the particle and they wait for a stable orbital to they want to come up to the base so they move around and absorb energy act couple until they fall back to these photons and energy units called rule through this discovery, classical physics discovery is the fault of quantum mechanics you like that to a little real good. We can observe it like our emissions there, we create two studios like spectroscopes that open this new science frontier. E black chunk and they wait that's not visible light that means you clear when they advance into climbing and practice became shared. While we still have much to learn about energy and matter, this makes it time to shed some understanding of why electrons damage. Make sure you realize why magnetic is nowhere near completely understood, even after one.